Hey, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm gonna talk about Top 5 Best Budget Graphics Card. Starting at number 5. AMD Radeon RX. AMD's Radeon RX 7900 XTX ranks as the fastest current graphics card from AMD and lands near the top of the charts with a generational price bump to match. Officially priced at $999, the least expensive models now start at around $900, and supply has basically caught up to demand. There's good reason for the demand, as the 7900 XTX comes packing AMD's latest RDNA 3 architecture. That gives the 7900 XTX a lot more potential compute, and you get 33% more memory and bandwidth as well versus the prior generation. Compared to the RX 6950 XT, on average the new GPU is 44% faster at 4K, though that shrinks to 34% at 1440p and just 27% at 1080p. It also delivers that performance boost without dramatically increasing power use or graphics card size. AMD remains a potent solution for anyone that doesn't care as much about ray tracing, and when you see the massive hit to performance for often relatively mild gains in image fidelity, we can understand why many feel that way. Still, the number of games with RT support continues to grow, and most of those also support NVIDIA's DLSS technology, something AMD hasn't fully countered even if FSR 2 slash FSR 3 can at times come close. If you want the best DXR slash RT experience right now, NVIDIA still wins hands down. Coming at number 4. NVIDIA GeForce RTX. For some, the best graphics card is the fastest card, pricing be damned. NVIDIA's GeForce RTX 4090 caters to precisely this category of user. It was also the debut of NVIDIA's Ada Lovelace architecture and represents the most potent card NVIDIA has to offer, likely until later this year when the next generation Blackwell GPUs are set to arrive. Note also that pricing of the RTX 4090 has become quite extreme with many cards now selling above $2,000. That's due to a combination of factors, including China RTX 4090 export restrictions and the rise of AI and deep learning, we've heard quite a few AI companies are leveraging RTX 4090 cards rather than paying three times as much for the often slower RTX 6000 ADA generation. If you don't already have a 4090, you're probably best off giving it a pass now. The RTX 4090 creates a larger gap between itself and the next closest NVIDIA GPU. Across our suite of gaming benchmarks, it's 35% faster overall than the RTX 4080 at 4K, and 32% faster than the RTX 4080 Super. It's also 47% faster than AMD's top-performing RX 7900 XTX, though it also costs nearly twice as much online right now. Let's be clear about something. You really need a high refresh rate 4K monitor to get the most out of the RTX 4090. At 1440p its advantage over a 4080 Super shrinks to 22%, and it's only 13% at 1080p, and that includes demanding DXR games. The lead over the RX 7900 XTX also falls to only 27% at 1080p. Not only do you need a high resolution, high refresh rate monitor, but you'll also want the fastest CPU possible to get the most out of the 4090. At number 3. NVIDIA GeForce RTX. NVIDIA's RTX 4070 didn't blow us away with extreme performance or value, but it's generally equal to the previous generation RTX 3080, comes with the latest Ada Lovelace architecture and features, and now costs about $150 less. With the launch of the RTX 4070 Super, see above, it also got a further price cut and the lowest cost cards start at around $530. We recently looked at the RTX 4070 versus RX 7900 GRE, and ultimately gave the nod to the NVIDIA card. That's based more on the NVIDIA ecosystem, including technologies like DLSS and AI features, as well as the very efficient architecture. If you're only interested in performance, the RX 7900 GRE makes a compelling case. NVIDIA rarely goes after the true value market segment, but with the price adjustments brought about with the recent 40 series supercards, 
things are at least reasonable. The RTX 4070 can still deliver on the promise of ray tracing and DLSS upscaling, it only uses 200W of power, often less, and in raw performance it outpaces AMD's RX 7800 XT, slightly slower in rasterization, faster in ray tracing, plus it has DLSS support. Nvidia is always keen to point out how much faster the RTX 40 series is, once you enable DLSS 3 frame generation. As we've said elsewhere, these generated frames aren't the same as real frames and increase input latency. It's not that DLSS 3 is bad, but we prefer to compare non-enhanced performance, and in terms of feel we'd say DLSS 3 improves the experience over the baseline by perhaps 10 to 20 percent, not the 50 to 100 percent you'll see in Nvidia's performance charts. Number 2 of my list. AMD Radeon RX. The Radeon RX 7900 GRE displaces the RX 7800 XT as our top AMD pick. It uses the AMD RDNA 3 architecture, but instead of the Navi 32 GPU in the 7800 XT, it sticks with the larger Navi 31 GCD and offers 33% more compute units. AMD balances that by reducing the GPU and GDDR6 clocks, though it's possible overclocking can return some of those losses, now that AMD has fixed the 7900 GRE overclocking bug. But the 7800 XT remains a close second, and that remains a decent alternative. Both the 7900 GRE and 7800 XT offer a good blend of performance and price, but the 7900 GRE ends up about 10% faster for 10% more money. Linear performance scaling on a high-end GPU makes the more expensive card the best overall pick of Team Red's current lineup. That's assuming you're like us and tend to want a great 1440p gaming experience while spending as little as possible. There are certainly faster GPUs, but the 7900 XT costs 27% more while delivering about 20% more performance, so diminishing returns kick in beyond this point. Efficiency has been a bit hit or miss with RDNA 3, but the 7900 GRE ends up as AMD's most efficient GPU right now, thanks at least in part to the reduced clocks. More processing clusters running at lower clocks is a good way to improve efficiency. It's also faster than the previous generation 6950 XT while using over 60W less power. In addition, you get AV1 encoding support and DP2.1 video output, plus improved compute and AI capabilities, it's over three times the image throughput of the 6950 XT in stable diffusion, for example. And number one. NVIDIA GeForce RTX. NVIDIA refreshed its 40 series lineup at the start of 2024 with the new Super models. Of the three, the RTX 4070 Super will likely interest be of interest to the most people. It inherits the same $599 MSRP as the non-Super 4070, which is dropped to $549 to keep it relevant, with all the latest features of the NVIDIA Ada Lovelace architecture. It's slightly better than a linear boost in performance relative to price, which is as good as you can hope for these days. There appear to be plenty of RTX 4070 Super Base MSRP models available at retail. We like the stealthy black aesthetic of the Founders Edition, and it runs reasonably cool and quiet, but third-party cards with superior cooling are also available, sometimes at lower prices than the reference card. The 4070 Super Bumps core counts by over 20% compared to the vanilla 4070, and in our testing we've found that the general lack of changes to the memory subsystem doesn't impact performance as much as you might expect. It's still 16% faster overall, at 1440p, even with the same VRM capacity and bandwidth, though helped by the 33% increase in L2 cache size. Check out this video description for latest price and more information. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe and stay tuned.